Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Golden Astrologer Podcast. I'm Deb McBride, and it is November 24th, 2019, Sunday, and I am broadcasting from lovely Eskazu, where I'm sitting on my patio in the very beautiful evening, listening to the crickets. And huh, so um, we're going to start talking about Mars and Uranus and how they've been interacting today, exactly. But um, you might remember that last week I mentioned that this would be at the same degree that there, that an eclipse had happened last July in 2018, July 2018, not this past July. And, uh, and I said, you know, that there's a similar relationship to where Mars and Uranus were meeting as that eclipse had, and that they were in, engaged with one another during the at this degree of four degrees fixed. And I said, well, back then we had an earthquake here in Costa Rica and we just had another earth tremor. <laughs> so yes, uh, history repeats itself. It's a recurrence. This is, what, this is what an astrological recurrence looks like. Something that happened in the initial aspect it might be a famous point, which we have now as four fixed, since that eclipse in July of 2018. Um, so now we have uh, an actual recurrence of that aspect, where we're walking, looking at things at uh, four degrees fixed, and Mars is at four degrees, and Scorpio, and Uranus is at four degrees, or three degrees, three, three, four degrees, um, Taurus, and... I just experienced a recurrence. It wasn't the same level of earthquake that we had back in 2018. It was just a little tremor. I felt the house tremble. Uh, that particular day on the eclipse was a rather rather startling earthquake. <laughs> but this was about, you know, blink and you'll miss it. Um, so this is a really good example of recurrence because recurrence means that the aspect happens and you're, it's like doing a drive-by, like, you know, a, a driving by an accident. You're doing this drive-by the accident and it's the scene of the accident. It's not, you know, you're not reliving the accident. You're driving by and looking at it and saying, ah, okay, yes, that reminds me of that day back in 2018. So that's where we are. We're we're kind of remembering a few things from 2018 right now, July of 2018. And, and new things to be formed because Uranus is now going into a part of the Zodiac that it has not been in in many, many, many decades. And we are starting to feel the effects of Mars opposite Uranus triggering that, that part of the Zodiac, which is right now three, four degrees fixed. And so Mars this morning, 11.49 a.m. Eastern Time, opposed Uranus, and it was 10.49 my time. Um, and Mars is the planet of assertion and aggression, and um, it is a planet of great uh, confidence and impetus and motivation. And But it's a planet that might drive a little too fast. It's a planet that might make us a little hot under the collar and so maybe that's what's been happening to you today maybe you're a little hot under the collar maybe you were driving too fast maybe you were cautioned to slow down at some point but indeed it's opposing uranus and uranus is the planet of unexpected things um uranus i would i would venture to say uranus in taurus is like an earthquake or rules earthquakes because it's, you never expect an earthquake, really, and it shakes things up, and Uranus does shake things up. Uranus absolutely is one of those planets that it more than Pluto sort of coming out from the underworld, or more than Neptune eroding the shoreline, Uranus is going to shake things up, and when it's in Earth, it's going to shake up the Earth, so... No one's going to visit Costa Rica if they keep listening to me because they're going to just think there's earthquakes every week. So <laughs> really, it's beautiful here and now it's becoming summer season. So it's a good time to visit. Anyway, um, another aspect happened today, and that would be Venus conjunct Jupiter. And this is a more pleasant aspect than Mars opposite Uranus. Now, people told me that they were having 
different experiences today. I got some very pleasant emails from people, and then I got emails from people who were experiencing the hot under the collar, Mars opposite Uranus. But Venus-Jupiter conjunction, which happened at 8.30 this morning, Eastern Time, is very lovely because they don't get together but once a year in whatever sign Jupiter happens to be in for the year and Venus visits for a short amount of time. Now, we are very fortunate because, as I told you last week, if you listened, Venus is meeting with Jupiter for the second time. And this is really lovely. Venus is now conjunct Jupiter and will be like it was we were getting up to this day the last couple of days and now it's you know sort of passing because it's made its peak it's made its conjunction and tomorrow will be you know it will be starting to move away and in fact venus is conjuncting jupiter at the end of sagittarius which is jupiter's sign and tomorrow evening venus will go into capricorn so these are venus's last days in sagittarius till next year and this is a very special aspect because we are experiencing something pleasant or lovely in the midst of, you know, the stress of Saturn, Pluto and the Mars Uranus. There's a moment of, of beauty and appreciation and love and kindness and uh, gratitude. And I just wrote my blog and posted it this morning and it's about gratitude and it's about the journey of Jupiter and that's what it's called. And you can see it on my website, thegoldenastrologer.com and click on Astrologer's Thoughts and the blogs will come up. But it is about gratitude and the gratitude that we have in our lives and how, we, how gratitude really makes things better um, when, you, when you are experiencing gratitude in your life and when you are grateful for things that haven't even happened yet. It, it sort of secures your future with those things. And that's actually an interesting and important thing to remember. So having gratitude is really a, uh, an important thing in our lives. And, and we have to stop. Now, this is a week of Thanksgiving. We have to stop and have our gratitude. Now, now there's lots of things to be grateful for, and we should be grateful every day. But um, I'm actually, frankly, glad there's a holiday where we stop and have the day for gratitude. I know all the historical, ancestral, political connotations of it, but um, there are, and there's many, but aside from all of that, if you don't prefer Thanksgiving, if you live in a country that does not celebrate Thanksgiving, it is a good day to have gratitude. So it's a day of gratitude. So maybe they should call it Gratitude Day. In any event, um, Gratitude is one of the topics in my blog. Please, I invite you to read it. And this is a, this is a very um, profound thing to think about on a regular basis. So, so gratitude is important when Venus comes to Jupiter because we really realize that Venus is more of an inner, the inner planet than Jupiter. Jupiter is not an outer planet per se, but when they come together, which is so non-frequent, that we really like, we sh really should stop and be grateful for all the things we have in our life and and be aware of how gratitude plays a part in our life and how many things we have to be grateful for. And Venus is the planet of, you know, love and relationships and friendships and and beautiful things and aesthetics and design and the arts, creativity. But when we mix it with Jupiter, it really does give an expansion to those things, and we become more aware of those things. And sometimes Jupiter doesn't give us everything that we want. Sometimes it gives us too much expansion, um, like around our waistlines. <laughs> Jupiter is responsible for that as well. <laughs> but it gives us a, a sense of expansion in our lives. And that's a good thing. That's really a very good thing. Now, um, Jupiter is ruling the sun right now because the sun is in Sagittarius as of Friday morning. Last Friday morning, the 22nd, Jupiter went into Sagittarius. And, I'm sorry, the sun went into Sagittarius. And that's Jupiter's sign. And although Jupiter has only about another week in its own sign, we've been experiencing it for a year, and that's a lovely thing. And we will discuss Jupiter going into Capricorn 
next week because it goes in on December 2nd, which is a week from Monday, a week from tomorrow. So what we are looking at right now is a whole bunch of gratitude because on Tuesday, there's a new moon at four degrees Sagittarius. Now it's not four degrees fixed, it's four degrees mutable, but it is a very lovely new moon. And the reason for that is that Jupiter, this happens once a year where there's a new moon in Sagittarius. And why maybe once, once in a while, there's two new moons in Sagittarius. And really what we're looking at is the very lovely coming together of the sun and the moon in Jupiter's sign. So Jupiter is still in Sagittarius this week and it's still in its own sign and it's still blessing us with its openness, expansiveness, mind expanding experiences and how we choose to use Jupiter's energy is up to us. But hopefully in this last year, you have been able to expand something really important in your life and become more aware of things that are really important in your life and allowed uh, an expansion and an open mindedness in your life. So when we when we have a new moon in that sign, it is ruled by Jupiter. So this is very powerful because as Jupiter says goodbye to its sign, and that's for 12 years, it's not coming back for 12 years, and we have to appreciate and be grateful for these blessings we've had in this last year. Jupiter rules the sun and the moon together on Tuesday. And that is at 10.06 a.m. Eastern time and 9.06 my time and adjust for your time zone wherever you live. But you'll feel that empowerment, that empowerment of the sun and the moon coming together in this fiery, beneficial, risk-taking, devil-may-care sign. Jupiter really is that planet that gives us the freedom to go do what we need and do what we want and, and um, gives us a mind-opening faith in life and in our life circumstances. So somewhere in your life, maybe today somebody said to you, hey, don't worry, I'm going to be there for you. Or maybe today something beautiful happened. Maybe you reconnected with an old friend or you got some nice news with Venus and Jupiter together. And, and so we've got a couple of days of loveliness happening. We've got a couple days of Venus, we've had a few days of Venus and Jupiter coming together and then ultimately that new moon on Tuesday. And how lovely of that, you know, do a ritual, celebrate that new moon, celebrate something optimistic, positive, something that's been eye-opening, something that's been a turning point in a positive direction in your life. So great. So everything is really, um, um, we're in that positive space at the end of the year where we go into the holiday mode and it's not always positive. You know, holidays can be rough and, and expensive and remind us of those we've lost. But take these couple of days and appreciate the energy of Jupiter in that new moon. Wherever early four degrees Sagittarius falls in your chart is a space where it's great to expand and be aware and, uh, you know, ask for something, treat yourself to something, say you love someone, be kind to someone, be gracious, be generous to someone. If someone's generous to you, you can take that generosity and be that way to someone else. And remember that, you know, these moments don't happen very often and that, you know, we can, we should appreciate them and and uh, let them infuse our beings with optimism. So happiness, have some happiness in this complicated Saturn-Pluto time where everything seems to be ex happening so fast and so much is awaiting our attention and so much is ready to turn and change. So with, with Jupiter um, ruling the sun and the moon, on Tuesday and, and really for a couple days because the, the moon will be in Sagittarius from Tuesday, Wednesday and wee hours of Thursday. And that's, that's a great thing. So appreciate it this week. So what else is going on? If you do have something at four degrees 
mutable. Or four degrees, especially four degrees Sagittarius, this is definitely affecting you. This is one of those times when you're going to feel this, you're going to feel the expansion of it, and bless your heart if you have something at four degrees Sagittarius. If your birthday is Tuesday and you have the sun at four degrees Sagittarius, and these are these are really lovely moments. So, you know, celebrate yourself. Have a have a great birthday. Um, what's going to happen on Wednesday? Another packed week. Neptune goes direct. It's been retrograde for five months or so, and now it's going direct. So this is an important moment as well because Jupiter rules Neptune as well as I mean, I'm sorry, rules Pisces, which is where Neptune is. Neptune is also the ruler of Pisces. So Jupiter is ruling where Neptune is placed at the moment. It's a co-ruler because before they discovered Neptune, which was not that many centuries ago, um, before they discovered Neptune, Jupiter was the traditional classic ruler of Pisces, which is where Neptune is. And so Neptune's going direct in its own sign. Jupiter has a hand in that. It's not completely in that, but it has a hand in it. So this is a very faith-oriented week. And as Neptune goes direct, we look back at these last few months and see where we've been and where our faith has taken us, where our intuition has taken us, where our um, abilities, our creative abilities, our psychic abilities have taken us. And that Neptune going direct, it's always good when the outer planets move forward. And it's actually a very pleasant time. We like, to, we like those planets to go forward. You know, it's not, it's not something we often feel immediately. It's not like that Mars Uranus today that was like, ugh, you know, shaking us up a little bit. But, you know, what we're doing is we're watching this outer planet move forward um, three degrees earlier than when it went retrograde. So it went retrograde in June and it was 18 degrees of Pisces and now it's at 15 degrees of Pisces where it will be direct. If you have anything at those degrees, Neptune is affecting them. And you will be feeling that a little bit. Um, it's not an obvious thing. There are times when I have to say, even though I'm an astrologer, I'm like, when did Neptune go direct? I, I missed that because Neptune's kind of insidious. Its energy is not direct, uh, directly uh, like in your face like Mars or Uranus or, or Pluto. It's, it's really kind of subtle and not very, uh, it doesn't announce itself. It just sort of happens behind your back. And you don't really recognize something. And then it starts to settle in and settle down. And you, you realize that what you're experiencing is Neptune going direct. And it's like, oh, oh, that was what that was about. Oh, that's why I had that insight. Oh, that's why I had that dream. Now, if you're born on the station of Neptune, if you had a station of Neptune going direct in your life, that is going to be what we call, once again, a recurrence for you. So if you're born on the station of Neptune direct, that is, or you had something important to happen and Neptune went direct in your chart by progression, you are going to feel this quite a bit. It's going to remind you of that. It's another driving by the scene again. But... For the rest of us who have just experiencing this by transit, um, it's sort of a, you're going to get to see things in a new light. You're going to become aware of things differently. You are going to become, and when I say differently, I mean, it's, it's, it is a shift. It's not just some experience of, you know, oh, what, what was that? You know, Neptune, what, what? you're going to feel some subtle shift. It's more, it's an outer planet, so it, it's out there in the collective unconscious. We may see more things this week in the news and in our global life than in our personal life, but I can guarantee you that somewhere in your chart where Pisces is, Neptune is going direct and you're, you're going to be aware of it on a certain level. So maybe a dream will come true. Maybe some information you've been expecting comes forward. Maybe one of your Piscean friends has something happen and something really good happen, or maybe some shift happens if you're a Pisces. Um, it is a consciousness planet, and that's why I use the word shift. It is, it is a, a shift. It is a, a subtle turning, an awakening, a reminding, an opening 
that happens when Neptune goes direct. We're not always aware of it because, like I said, Neptune just kind of just slips in there. So um, it isn't an, an like like when Mercury went direct last week. There was an agitation. I definitely felt an agitation last Wednesday. It wasn't like I was completely, you know, upset or anything. But there was a there was an underlying meal, you know, just that feeling of being sort of needled and that was nep that was mercury going direct i definitely felt it go direct it definitely felt like a breeze entered the room a beautiful lovely fresh air entered the room when when mercury went direct but that morning when i woke up i was like Ugh, what's going on but i but i knew it was mercury when we get to thursday this week the moon occults jupiter which is an interesting thing because the moon will be at the end of sagittarius um it's when the moon goes void on Thursday at 5.50 a.m. Eastern time. It occults Jupiter. The last thing it does is occults Jupiter, which means it sort of blinks out Jupiter's light. Now, you'll remember we've had occultations with the moon going into Capricorn and blocking Saturn and Pluto's light, which is what it's going to do on Friday. So the moon is busy. It's almost like an eclipse. It's like, remember, the moon will block out the sun's light. Well, this is... This is the moon blocking out Jupiter's light. So you might have a moment Thursday morning where it's like things don't seem so positive, but just let it pass, let it go. And once the moon gets into Capricorn at 7.30 a.m. Eastern time, it's going to be a different story. So don't worry about it. Um, on that day also, we have Venus trining Uranus. So a little bit of excitement there, creative excitement artistic excitement, relationship excitement, and uh, Mercury trining Neptune. So these are positive aspects. That's a lot of really good inspirational creativity on Thursday. So I think we've got a really interesting week coming up. I wouldn't say it's like, hey, yeah, great, lots of energy, because Neptune's movement always makes you feel a little bit seasick. But um, if you're like me and you're sensitive, you might not notice it at all. <laughs> um, and I say that because we don't know what Neptune does. Like, there are times when, yes, I walk by, and, oh, wow, Neptune went direct. When did that happen? And then there are days when I go, ooh, <laughs> Neptune must be doing something. Um, so Mercury is trining Neptune. And Neptune is sort of standing still for a little while there. So Neptune and Mercury are meeting up and you'll, you can guarantee some insights, some intuition, some information may come to you through the ethers, through your, through your, um, through your field. If you've got your antennas raised. So everybody have your antennas raised this week. It's, it's one of those kinds of weeks with, with intuition speaking to us and creativity speaking to us. So I wish everyone a creative inspiring Thursday. When we get to Friday, the moon is in Capricorn. And very interestingly, it's void Thursday from 5.50 a.m. only till 7.33 a.m. Eastern time. So it's really not, it's like maybe a little more than an hour and a half where it's void and then it goes into Capricorn and then it goes void again Friday night. <laughs> so it goes void at 10.57 in Capricorn. That's not much time in Capricorn where it's not void. So it's not making any major aspects to any other planets, but it is going to occult Saturn at 4.17 p.m. Eastern Time and then occult Pluto as it's going into void at 10.57 p.m. Um, Eastern Time. So again, Saturn and Pluto's lights go out Friday afternoon into the evening. So there's a bit of the moon is busy. The occultations come and um, we don't necessarily access Jupiter on Thursday and then which is Jupiter's day and Friday, which is Venus's day, which is, and Saturday, um, Saturday, it goes, it goes out of void, oh, not until 3.15 in the afternoon, um, Eastern time. It doesn't go into Aquarius, into Aquarius until the mid afternoon on when a uh, Saturday. So we've got moon occulting Saturn. We've got moon occulting Pluto on Friday. These, uh, remember those energies are not accessible. So just keep moving. Don't indulge it. Just keep going. Yes, your transformation is happening. Believe me, it is. Um, and next Sunday, if you can believe it, is December 1st. And the moon will be in Aquarius. And it's squaring Mars. And it's a sort of a, 
you know, because Mars is definitely in that sign of uh, Scorpio. And eventually it's going to make some, uh, you know, other aspects to the sun, a nice sextile to the sun on Sunday. But it's a Sunday's pretty quiet, other than the, the fact that it is December 1st. It's Saturday that Merc um, the moon squares Uranus. And uh, before it gets to Mars, Mars will have moved on by then. So Mars and Uranus are going to hang in the air for a couple days. So, you know, drive carefully, keep control of your temper, use it to be inspired, um, use it to be ingenious. And then we have, you know, this lovely Venus Jupiter that's going to hang in there. And then tomorrow Venus will go into Capricorn. Venus is eventually going to meet up with Saturn and then Pluto. We're not going to be there for a little while yet. So let's just kind of enjoy Venus where it is right now because that's going to be some sort of relationship stuff we'll talk about as those moments occur. And the moon is currently in Scorpio. It void most of tomorrow. It's going to void at 12.30 p.m. Eastern time. going to be void until 3 a.m. on Tuesday. And then it goes into that Sagittarius, nice new moon. And then... Wednesday, a nice Sagittarius moon, have a little party, you know, remember the sun is in Sag, the moon is in Sag, these are good things, this is, this is optimism. There's not a whole lot of air in the sky, in fact, there really isn't any, now that Mars is in Scorpio, there is no air in the sky, we, we, we will have air once the moon goes into Aquarius on Saturday, but really, we're not dealing with any verbal things, verbal stuff. So that means the words might fail us, um, but we have to, you know, ideas are still present because of Mercury's connection to Neptune. And, you know, you might not find the words for things. Maybe your thoughts are a little um, out of tune, but that's okay. Inevitably, the moon goes into an air sign and we, we find the way to have some words but right now it's all about instinct it's about intuition it's about um, the feeling of uh, you know trusting your intuition and your faith and how we how we do that and you know leaving the words behind turning your brain off for a little while giving yourself a break mentally and not necessarily uh, feeling and finding that words are always necessary. Maybe right now it's good to be um, intuitive and listening and just tuning in and in touch with your feelings. And it's Thanksgiving in the United States, and I wish everyone a lovely Thanksgiving this week. I'm Deb McBride. This has been the Golden Astrologer podcast from Escazú, Costa Rica have a look at my blog about Jupiter, um, thegoldenastrologer.com. Go to Astrologer's Thoughts. And my Instagram page is The Golden Astrologer, and my Twitter is at Dev Astrology. I'm here on Sundays, and I wish you a very happy week, a lovely evening, and a happy Thanksgiving, if that's what you're celebrating. Thank you for listening.